Hi everyone, it's time for a vlog. It's New Year's. Yeah, it's a uh, 2nd of Jan. Hi, Jupi, you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> okay, you can go. It's a uh, 2nd of Jan, and I think, uh, well, okay, she's back. No, no, no. <laughs> the plan for today uh, is to <laughs> frame this up. I've got a little photo frame that I bought from like an art fair. Oh, don't scratch my chair. That's not very nice. <laughs> But apparently they do this art fair every year um, as a kind of like Christmas initiative uh, for various groups of social enterprises um, and I thought I would get one to frame some pictures of Asian PR. So this was sent to me by my friend that fostered the kittens when they were young. Um, it's not the same size but we'll make it work so that's that. And we also have a couple of clay rings to paint today. So. I don't know whether you can see the clay rings, but I made these as extras because I was making some clay trays as Christmas presents and these were quite like <laughs> shoddily made, like shoddy hand handmade goods, you know. Another thing that's been on my mind a lot lately is like film cameras. Uh, I know this is turning out to be a very artsy vlog, but I promise you, I am not a very like artistic person. I just tend to have a lot of little creative hobbies here and there. But um, I've been using this film camera for a lot, uh, a long time. This is the Ricoh GR1. Um, it's actually a camera that's passed down from my dad. He used it a lot when he was younger, I think. I think, yeah, I mean, there were no digital cameras, so I've always struggled with photography as like a hobby because uh, film photos can be incredibly like waste producing um, just because it's like really costly and also because it uses a lot of stuff so the film rolls, the kind of uh, processing whole situation um, but I guess it, you can't really replicate that kind of feeling with digital, digital photography uh, it's really very hard to capture that warmth I think that I really enjoy from film photos. I've always wanted to sell my own prints though. I have a couple of photos that I've taken over the past few years uh, and I've always wanted to kind of put them up as prints and to sell them as like little bookmarks. This is by a local artist. I will link her bio down below. She does amazing work. She creates all these like pigments from scratch from nature so she'll collect like seashells or like little piece of driftwood I think. I'm not too sure whether it's driftwood wood, but she once made pigment from onion skins and it turned out to be this beautiful like brown reddish colour. Um, and she painted these postcards which I found at the art fest as well. <laughs> and I bought one because uh, I think it's such an amazing piece of work but also how it really came from like the very beginning, <laughs> the pigments that she created herself and then this pin painting that came out of it, which is amazing. This is one of the film photos that I really loved. Uh, this is one that I took when I was in Seoul and I really really love how it turned out. Uh, so yeah, I have a whole bunch of folders of all my film photos but this is my absolute favourite because of the colours and just because of the composition. So. <laughs> yeah, because this is a booktube channel, I do want to talk about some of the books that I've been reading um, but I've been failing a lot in my attention span the past couple of days uh, yeah, I don't want to put myself under pressure to read a lot of books although I do want to be a little bit more structured in terms of how I read my books so that I can also bring you all along on this journey with me um, and I am thinking of actually starting a small book club situation um, one on YouTube with a reading list, so that means I will choose a book a month for us to all read and then we can discuss it, um, hopefully maybe during a live at the end of the month. Um, yeah, uh, but for TikTok, I am actually gonna try launching a weekly or maybe twice a week situation where I just go on live an hour a day just to read with everyone and that can be for any book, so anyone can bring any book with them um, and it's just like a set aside time to just read books together. So I am thinking of doing those two things this year because um, I feel like I've always wanted to launch my own book club but at the same time I didn't want to limit people's reading choices. I never really wanted people to read the same things as me all the time. 
Uh, but I guess there is some merit in reading similar books, uh, or at least to read together, uh, to build the habit of reading together. So that is something I have in mind for 2022. And I guess this vlog is like me just brainstorming a lot of ideas to do in the year of 2022. Not too sure whether I'll achieve all of them. Uh, the other day I was watching one of uh, Kath Catherine's videos. Um, she was talking about how it is possible, how would it be possible to find a dream job. I struggle with that a lot because I think that anyone who critiques the work system or critiques capitalism on YouTube tends to get a lot of the same comments about how it, you know, you shouldn't be whining or you shouldn't be complaining, it's impossible to see another way out, or that it's hypocritical for you to want to uh, earn a living or to do things uh, or to opt out, basically uh, either you're like an anarchist or you're a capitalist, which I think is completely false because like we all know we're all in this world together, we're all in society together um, and we have to do what we can do and for me, if I have to earn a living, I, I do have to earn a living so I do kind of have to find my way into independence and to provide for my family uh, hopefully as I get older um, and all of, a lot of these things do weigh heavily on my mind, so as much as I critique the system, I also have to survive in the system. I hope that everyone understands this and like extends understanding or like extends empathy to anyone that yeah, is trying to find many different ways of making a living on this earth, <laughs> you know. It kind of struck me how like so many people have different occupations, but it almost feels like impossible to reach a stage where you have an unconventional career and you're, and you're secure, you're safe, uh, and you can still pursue conventional things. It seems almost really difficult to attain that, uh, but it's worth trying, I think. I do think it's worth trying. Anyway, let's move on to the books. Um, the two books I'm currently reading are these two books. This one, I'm struggling to read a lot, although I do like the premise a lot. It is about craftsmanship, uh, it's about What's it called? The Craftsman by Richard Sennett. It's really about the act of craftsmanship and how we relate to our material sense of making things, like the act of making things is what makes us human. Uh, whereas this book is about capital. This author is arguing that we, are moved, we have moved past the idea of capital that Marx first argued about and that we're no longer talking about capital itself, we're talking about access to information, we're talking about the control over the flow of information that has now taken over the role of capital in kind of determining who is more powerful or who is in the ruling class, uh, which is a very interesting and very um, important uh, debate to have, I think, because uh, if that is indeed true, like if this theory indeed stands, uh, then we are no longer really in capitalism as how Marx has really described it, but rather we are in a different form of capitalism, or rather we could be in a post-capitalistic state that no one has really um, put a label on, uh, and that we are no longer bound by the same rules of capitalism and that it should be called something else. Some people have used the words of techno-feudalism uh, to describe the new state of of economic transactions that we're in, uh, which I think is a really great term to dig into, like exactly um, how we moved from a capital-based economy to now that is kind of bounded by technology. But I do think that it's not entirely, we're not entirely in the techno-feudalistic state yet, because we do see that there is still a lot of the world's economy that is very, very much run uh, by the material things still because I think for me I still re I really still think from the point of view of like always questioning um, the global north in terms of like questioning writers who write from the global north whether when they push all these theories forward are they actually still considering a lot of the economies around the world that have not been so integrated into the whole digital web of transactions um, and although it's true that a lot of emerging economies are very very much enmeshed in digital economies and, and all these like technological innovations, there's still a lot of the economy that isn't um, entrapped in that or that a lot of the economy is still kind of uncovered um, and there's still so much that we have to unravel in, with regards to the environment. That would be really interesting to see like a theory that links uh, digital economies and how we can then incorporate the nature and then how we can incorporate nature and environment into 
reorganizing economics. The third book that I'm reading is actually called Work Won't Love You Back. I forgot who the author was, but I'm currently on the third chapter, I think, about teachers, uh, which is really interesting. I really love how the author started out really talking about the gendered aspect of work and labor and talking about the role of teachers and um, about domestic help. Uh, I think those two things are incredibly relevant here in Singapore as well. I do think it is a very, very important topic to think about in today's landscape where a lot of our domestic help has been feminized and also has been racialized to a large degree. Um, and I really love how the author actually started from that point of view, talking about work through a gendered and racialized lens, also talking about it through an ethics of care sort of situation where, you know, just because a certain work requires a lot more care, and because it has been feminized in a certain way, it becomes downplayed a lot or it becomes really difficult to protect the rights of workers in those areas um, and that housework or teaching work oftentimes can really differ in the way it's perceived according to like, yeah, race and gender. I've always seen this disparity in the professionalism of, of the occupation itself, how it's perceived as housework uh, and then how it's perceived in a professional sense and why there was such a huge disparity between the genders or the representation of different races in these fields. So that has been really interesting for me to read. I do think it adds a lot of nuance to the discussion on work. A lot of my videos on work have been quite general, just talking about the structure of work, talking about work more in a class sense. Uh, but I do think it is very important to talk about the gendered and racialized aspects of work because work by itself is not very inclusive. If I'm not wrong, the author actually did do a podcast with two other people talking about work. Uh, I'll link the podcast down below, so maybe that would be a more interesting listen if you're not so willing to pick up the book or if you don't have time to read the book. Uh, I'll link the podcast down below. I think the ideas should be pretty similar. Uh, to the book uh, and to ideas of work as well. So yeah. So it's time for lunch and I have these leftovers. Um, this is like mushroom soup that we had from New Year's Eve. <laughs> some cauliflower. These are some basil that I picked from the garden. And I'm gonna make it more savory by adding some marmite. I'm also currently roasting a clove of garlic to see if I can increase the savoriness of everything. This is the pasta. Turned out, I guess I'll see how the flavor turns out. I decided to put the cauliflower on the salad because um, I figured this would not be enough, so I grabbed some fresh greens. This is just some sesame dressing that I always use. <laughs> yeah. I always wanted to do a mukbang, but I don't know. Anyway, it's pretty rare for me to have lunch by myself at home. Usually the whole family's here, but um, I guess we're here alone. Mm. Yeah, so for me when I make pasta, I tend to break the pasta in half so that it fits into the pot and it's easier to like grab. I don't know whether that's like taboo or anything. I guess if anyone were to ask me to describe my diet, I don't know whether I would call myself a vegan, a vegetarian. A vegan diet ne isn't necessarily the most sustainable or ethical in a lot of ways. Especially when so many of the ingredients might require a lot of import and a lot of travel. And for me, I think I would rather eat from a local vegetarian store um, that uses more of like <laughs> regional ingredients rather than to adopt a vegan diet and then have to go to restaurants that sell just like vegan food. I tend not to eat out a lot because I don't really like having to eat expensive vegan food outside. So sometimes I just have to take like the fish option or the chicken option just because those are like the only food items available that I'll be willing to eat. So I guess I do sometimes eat fish and chicken, um, yeah, given the context. Sometimes it's really hard to negotiate when you're living with other people. So I guess to me, it's really about finding a balance in what, we, what you can do in terms of 
having to balance your diet with other people around you. And the most important thing is to enjoy the food. I feel like a lot of people are unwilling to give, give up meat because they feel like that's the food that they enjoy the most. But I think that once you start enjoying a wider range of food, you wouldn't miss meat that much. Um, of course, it's a different texture, it's a different flavor, but I don't think it's that much of a big deal. Um, and I also want to recognize that meat is a big part of a lot of people's cuisines. So I think in special circumstances, like if it's someone's celebration, you know, and you want to bring out meat as a celebration, I think that is fine and it's valid. Um, I think the only issue is that we over demand meat uh, in a way that our food systems cannot cope with. Um, and that's the issue here, which, which would then be about moderating the amount of meat that we all eat uh, rather than, you know, everyone sort of strictly being vegan because that would be the best, but it's also not realistic given that we all come from different contexts and different circumstances. In some places, meat might be more widely available than healthy, fresh vegetables and greens. Um, so yeah, I just want, I just hope that we can adopt a more flexible approach to having a more flexitarian or sustainable diet. can hear you right. It's okay, show you. Play like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit soft. Alright. Then you press the hole here. Then then you add the gula masa. Right. Cannot add too much sugar. If not, it will burst out. Especially when you want to boil it. Then, then oh, after that you boil it. Then you have your ondan day. After you boil it, then you can roll it in the coconut. So yeah, we just went out for. So no, eh. <laughs> Agent P is just here now. Hey. Yeah. Hmm. She really likes this toy. <laughs> it hasn't really been easy like creating content as much as it was earlier in my journey. A lot of things in my life now are semi-serious, so freelance gigs, this channel. Um, and various things in between are all kind of semi-serious, kind of casual things that I'm doing, sometimes for income, sometimes not. So I do also wonder whether it's time to kind of find something a little bit more stable for myself. Um, but I guess I always have that inner doubt of whether I can actually run my own thing, whether I can actually make a stable income based on my own skills alone uh, instead of working for an employer where I am right now. Um, that's kind of like my major block and I've been trying to think more about entrepreneurship, like trying to reclaim that title, not in a way that I want to hustle and make a lot of money, but rather think about it in terms of self-sufficiency, self-sufficiency, whether I can do something with my own hands and to provide for myself in ways that I can be responsible for and to know my work, not to be alienated from my labour and to also see the tangible um, effects of what I can do. Yeah, business, you know, I never thought that I would ever want to ever learn about business, but I do believe that business can be ethical. I mean, humans have always been transacting, we've always been 
trading services and goods i'm pretty sure there are a lot more healthier ways to do it um yeah i hope to find something like that this year i guess so that is my reflection on this card i guess it, it's a pretty interesting card um upright it shows a young man that is considering his harvest and planning for the next harvest i've been drawing a lot of these pentacles cards lately these few months uh, a lot of questions on finances and wealth and material possession which i think is great because i am kind of undergoing a huge shift in the way that i think about money not saying that i want to not earn money but the question is now how do i earn money that allows me to provide for the ones i love but also to channel it to other meaningful causes and things like that and also not to have money at the center of everything to also figure out ways of transacting that may not necessarily be money driven so that is a huge thing i think about i think nowadays yeah interesting card Okay. I'm really glad to start my year off like this, I think. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? I'm really excited to embark on more projects that hopefully have more collaborations this year. So if you're someone that wants to collaborate with me, uh, do reach out and let me know. I'll try my best to figure out how to collab. Um, yeah. Because I still think there's so much more for me to learn in terms of the whole content creating space. Ow, what did you bite me? Yes, that's it for me for this vlog. Thank you so much for joining me in this one. Uh, I really, really enjoyed today. It was super chill, super fun. A little bit artsy, I guess. Not a lot of books, but a few. <laughs> maybe next time we'll do more of an outdoor vlog. Like maybe we can go to a cafe or maybe we can go to a bookstore, library and see what we can do yeah so thanks for joining me again do take care i hope you're staying safe with your loved ones uh drink enough water get enough sleep i hope that the new year treats you really well um but i guess what we can do even if it doesn't is to treat ourselves well so that's what i wish for everyone and yeah have a good day or a good night <laughs>